Seed Shopping Rules, a how-to video from the Backyard Parables by me, Margaret Roach. To resist buying every seed I see in the catalogs requires an annual review of the math specific to vegetable gardening. I have to force myself to crunch the numbers and get at this answer. How many of my desired A, B, and C plants can fit into my X square feet of suitable vegetable growing space? And for what cost in seeds, supplies, and labor? It's that simple and that impossible. I work gradually toward a solution, navigating a series of smaller questions, starting with, what do I have left over that's viable from last year? This may require a germination test to answer, or at least a serious reckoning around factors including the packed for date stamped on the packets, the conditions I stored them in, and what is or was slumbering inside. Most seed will last a couple to several years, but there are differences of expert opinion. Onion seed lasts just a year, everyone agrees, with parsley and parsnips also very short-lived. Cucumbers and muskmelons last about five years, watermelons slightly less, corn about two, maybe three, and likewise for peas and beans. But there's disagreement around lettuce, some say two, some say six years, and spinach, one to five. It all sounds like possible prison sentences, doesn't it? The safest strategy, order a backup supply of anything important. I try to duck the next question, and it's easy to do that on a sunny winter day without a leaf on a tree, but here it is. In the growing season, how much room in a sunny spot where the soil drains well do I really have? Tell the truth. Refusing to prune nearby shrubs means that half of one vegetable bed is now too shady for other than parsley or summer lettuce. I deduct those square feet or get out the handsaw. Most vegetables crave sunshine. Next question, what really rates a parcel of that precious square footage based on A, what do I eat most of and can't live without, and B, from that list of big loves, what is available locally for a reasonable price in season? The essentials list includes items I put up for year-round use, my tomato sauce and soups and various herb pestos. If I consume a lot of something and have the proper spot to store it, whether fresh or canned or frozen, it may be worth growing. Examples, I eat a lot of white potatoes and winter squash, heavyweight items that when purchased really add up. I also grow a lot of chard and kale and the year's basil and Italian flat leaf parsley. I raise my onions and garlic too, but not from seed. So what won't I grow if I follow this thinking? I stopped making space for eggplant because I only ate them once a month. And I use celery, sure, but maybe a bunch every month, so no grow. Certain specialty items are either too pricey or unavailable locally, meaning if I wanted to make salsa, I'd grow the tomatillos. Grow what's scarce or precious. For the price of a single pound of organic baby mesclun, I can buy seed for a couple of years of abundant salads. Once I have my wish list, the final challenge, which are really worth starting from seed myself. The obvious group is anything that does better direct seeded than started in cells and transplanted, or that I want to make repeat sowings of. Buying transplants wouldn't satisfy that last bit, since seedlings tend to be sold in a big push in high spring, but not all season long. Things I direct sow once or multiple times include beans, peas, squash and pumpkins, cucumbers, root crops, spinach, salad greens, greens for braising, dill, cilantro, melons, and corn. I start basil indoors a few times a year, then transplant it. With things that do fine from transplants, such as tomatoes or peppers, or that I only want one generation of per season, I think this way. How many plants of each will I need? I have taken to buying a cherry tomato plant at the garden center, rather than ordering a packet of seeds. Who needs more than a cherry tomato plant or two? With paste tomatoes, of which I grow about a dozen plants, my thinking is the opposite. No wasted seed or effort by starting from scratch. So questioning myself over and again, I page through every catalog twice and write up all my orders before placing a single one. Then, after following all my curmudgeonly guidelines, I add a couple of indulgences back onto my order that don't meet the requirements at all, since nobody's looking.